I am from uh, Eagle Tech, which is a partner in the project Peer to Peer Value. And we have organized this uh, CAPS Info Day in collaboration with the other CAPS projects in Barcelona. This uh, session is going to uh, be based on presentation of, of these uh, CAPS uh, pro projects, which is Peer to Peer Value that I will present uh, myself, then Dicel that uh, David Laniado will present. Then uh, Confine, which Confine is not a CAPS project, but it's a like, uh, previous to CAPS and it's in the same kind of uh, um, soul, I would say. And Leandro uh, Navarro will present, and also uh, Monica Garriga, which is uh, another project called uh, Citizens Square Kilometer. It's part of Confine, will also give us a, a test. And then we have two not, not yet funded uh, European uh, projects, but uh, still uh, very interesting uh, local initiatives, which will present uh, uh, Mercedes Botella from Son Connexion, and then our local poster, which I would like uh, very much uh, to thank, which is Fab Lab, that Thomas Diaz uh, will explain us. And uh, after Thomas' presentation, uh, we will have uh, uh, answers and um, questions. Well, actually, after each of each project presentation, if you have a straightforward question, you can uh, ask. Otherwise, the general debate is going to be uh, at the end of the of of the whole uh, presentation. I will act also as moderator because the moderator couldn't come at the very end, so I am going to be presenting but also uh, moderating. And so the goal of this panel is to give you an overview of already uh, uh, projects and particularly to reflect, reflect on two, two trends that uh, CAPS want to promote. On the one hand, the question of decentralization. How far the centralized infrastructure is uh, already part of the, of the social innovation, uh, collaborative production uh, uh, ecosystem and also how far uh, these kind of projects can keep, uh, can be open and can also uh, scale up uh, maintaining decentralization and openness. So in the presentation of the project we will uh, uh, point about these uh, uh, two principles uh, uh, which CAPS called want to promote. The um, hashtag of the session is uh, CAPS uh, CC, so if you want to intervene through Twitter or make also questions through, through Twitter, please uh, do. So I, now I have changed my hat and I am... to uh, support the design uh, of a 
technological platform based on the centralized infrastructure that uh, is being released uh, with the project. And we develop this uh, work through uh, the, the principles of Lean, meaning that uh, we have a very circular kind of uh, development in the sense of we start doing uh, research, then we analyze the results of the, of the research in the empirical field, and we apply them into uh, design guidelines. The design guidelines for technological development could apply to any other project that is developing a platform, not only us, but also we apply it from, for the technological development part of the project, which uh, is being based on, uh, at the moment of developing an implementation of uh, Google Drive real-time API over a decentralized related infrastructure. Samer uh, Hassan from uh, University Complutense of, of Madrid is uh, coordinating the technological development and, and if you have questions he can also um, uh, uh, provide more in detail. After we, de we the, the research informed the technological development, we also make a test with the communities. So uh, at the moment uh, we have a check with uh, several communities, the Open Knowledge uh, Foundation in France, we make in Milan, Garantia in Madrid, with different type of communities that are trying our, uh, our uh, uh, platform. And on the base of the feedback, we restart the cycle and uh, develop research and reform the technological development. Regarding research, we have a very multidisciplinary uh, approach and, and uh, we have developed at the moment four types of methodologies. On the one hand, we develop a mapping of uh, common basic production in which we build a sample of 300 uh, cases and analyze, uh, did a statistical analysis of some uh, features of these cases like uh, when when did they start it, which type of collaboration they are in jail, which governance models do they have, which strategies of sustainability do they have. And this end up uh, 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 being the larger actually uh, data set on observations of, uh, of common based reproduction. The data sets have 50,000 observations of common based reproduction. This is a, a, an out of note, the project in itself which is, the, is uh, based on open data. And uh, uh, through, with this uh, uh, data, we have been investigating how, which would be the conditions of success of collaborative production, meaning which are the, the type of cases that tend to be more able to generate uh, value. We have investigated this through this uh, data set of statistical analysis, also, we have done surveys to, to cases of collaborative production. We have done digital ethnography, combining qualitative and quantitative uh, approach, and also technological analysis of the cases. So all of this big uh, program of research through different methodologies has informed uh, the technological development of the project, uh, looking into incorporating the design of the, te of the technology, which are the design features that tend to characterize the success cases in, in some way. Uh, we have uh, taken particular attention to questions of governance, sustainability and systems of uh, reward and how these can relate to value creation. So I will provide some uh, basic results of the research. So what characterizes common based field production? First, uh, we, we define it a set of dimensions of, of criteria of the limitation of collaborative production. Because collaborative production, there is uh, already 20 years that we can identify cases on the internet from using it to many cases on the internet that has uh, is characterized as collaborative production and there is a big expansion <coughs> of it. But we need uh, the limitation criteria in order to understand what would be common basic production in contraposition of, for example, new forms of market innovation. There are cases that, that actually make the question of uh, Airbnb or, uh, or cases like um, uh, mechanical church, how far those are cases that are more characterized as market innovation or can be characterized as common-based peer production. It depends. There are uh, 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 very different 
type of cases and, and, and also cases that are in the border and we define this delimitation criteria in order to help us understand the expansion of collaborative production. So on the one hand there should be cases that are, should be collaborative in the sense of uh, there should be more than two people involved and there should be a, a collaborative production in the sense of there should be something out of the process that was not at the, at the uh, starting of it. The second uh, criteria of delimitation for our cases is that it should be based on peer-to-peer -peer relationships. And peer-to-peer -peer relations refer, on the one hand, that they are not based on, on traditional command. Uh, someone like having a working contract and your boss can tell you what to do, but there are other types of organization of the task uh, distribution. And it's, there is also a limited mercantile exchange. This means that there might be some a monetary exchange out of the pro uh, part of the process, but this is very limited in order to uh, uh, explain the activity happening in, in there. Uh, last, there should be a, a common resource out of it, in the sense of the resulting outcome of the process, of the production process, uh, should be common in terms of, uh, many, in many cases this is reflected in the type of license that uh, favor open access, reproducibility, or derivativeness. So on the basis of these uh, criteria, we have been mapping collaborative production and we identified uh, 400, uh, more than 400 cases. And in order to map in collaborative production, we have done it actually in a collaborative manner. In the sense of we built a directory, uh, which is op an open uh, resource. Uh, we put some cases, but also other people we don't know uh, actually also uh, have uh, uh, incorporated uh, cases to the directory. You can go there, you can download the database of cases, you can uh, uh, also um, consult uh, the data uh, and the features of each of the, of the cases. For example, the type of license that they use, the type of, of platform, or which country they are based. Uh, we have investigated which is the actual area of activity of each of the cases, and we have uh, 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 identified um, 33 areas of activity. So, if we all of all of us know like flows, like free, free and open source kind of projects, they are very well known, which are the the brown area are the biggest area, so the, the free and open source type of projects which were the, the first kind of cases in which the model of common basic production start to appear, uh, they still uh, are the biggest part of the, of the sample. So I, I'm referring to this uh, 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 um, brown area. But then also we identified that there are many other areas of activity that they are not as big as that, those ones but are getting their ground. For example, there is sensor networks, there are internet of things, there, there are <coughs> design, there are urban commons, there are peer-to-peer -peer funding, open science. So there are many areas of activities based on com common-based production which are uh, adopting uh, this model. So for us it's more than thinking uh, of Common basic production is just an area of in which some type of uh, products are being produced. It's actually a model of production that is becoming uh, the, the reference in, in a large uh, set of uh, areas. Second, we have also analyzed uh, or from our sample, we have analyzed the relationship between the cases. So in this uh, sample that we have been developing statistical analysis, we uh, apply network uh, analysis in order to identify which are the cases that are central or which are the trends. And we have uh, come up with several interesting things. For example, that the cases that has more, uh, are more linked, that are the balls that are biggest, are actually licensed. So the, the uh, Creative Commons license or new license. This is, this is telling us that the, the common basic production ecosystem, the institutions or the, or, the, or the resources that most of the cases are related to are uh, the license. They are very central in the ecosystem. Uh, we also have identified clusters of cases in the sense of you will notice that there, are, there is an area in which there are many cases that tend to uh, have many interlinks between them. 
this, this area, we call it wiki industrial uh, area, because there is like a distribution of different cases that tend to provide uh, similar type of resources. For example, there is a big uh, interlay between Wikipedia, Wikihub, Wikitravel, like cases that are similar between them and they uh, split the, the type of activities that they develop. But another interesting result is that if we analyze the type of domain of the cases, for example, if the domain is .info, .org, or .com, we also realize that the .com cases tend to be very peripheral. So the, the ones that are in, in less dark, uh, uh, strong blue are peripheral to the area. So the .org or .info or .net are much more central. This is another element of the, of the non-mercantile character of this type of uh, production. Regarding uh, how value creation functions in common based reproduction, uh, this is a very complex uh, question because this, this helps us un to understand the, the successful cases. So which are the successful cases, the cases that actually develop value? But what is actually value in common based peer production when common based peer production is characterized by very limited presence of, of uh, money? There are very few activities that is actually happen through money exchange. Or when traditional theories of value, uh, like the price, does not apply to common based peer production. It's not through price system, it's not through paying that you access to this uh, uh, type of production. So uh, this applies to a real necessity to develop uh, dimensions and, and, and indicators of how of value creation in common based peer production. And this is what we have been doing in, in a peer to peer value project. We have been developing a, a conceptual uh, uh, analytical framework to understand uh, value in, in common based peer production, also uh, through researching what actually is present in the communities. And we have uh, provided these five dimensions of value in common based peer production. In the sense of if the, if the case develops a, a big community, this refers to the level of participation. If there is many people participating in itself, or there are many uh, interrelations between the community, in itself this is valuable. The second element is if the case actually is able to achieve its mission. If the mission is uh, to, to, to do a hub lab, like a fab lab, like the one that we are here, if, if it's been achieved, that's something that is valuable also. Monetary value, even if, uh, as I say, there is very limited uh, monetary exchange in common based production, and still the level of budget of the case is also an indicator of, of, of values. Uh, and the last two is the social use, how far the resource that is being produced by the case is being used and adopted and how far it's reputated. So we have been investigating these five dimensions of value. And we, what we have found out is that the dimension of the community is very uh, diverse. There is not a typical range of community uh, scale. But what is present in, in most of the cases is that there is what present what is known as power law, referring that there is very different degrees of involvement. There is the tendency of 1% uh, of people very, uh, with a strong involvement, a 9% weekly involvement, and a 90% of lookers or non-involvement. This is known as power law, and we, we actually identify this also in, our, uh, in the sample. Second, in terms of mission accomplished, we have realized that actually the projects are quite satisfied. In a scale up to 10, uh, half of the projects point themselves at 7. So the cases are actually have satisfied about the level of accomplish the mission. So common based reproduction is a, a model of production that seems uh, be working for the, the cases that are trying to put it in, in practice. In terms of the monetary value, we identify that actually the, the budget of the cases tend to be very low. 39% of the cases has a budget of less than 1,000 euros. And still they are satisfied with uh, accomplish their mission. So again, uh, monetary exchange is not a, a dimension that helps to understand the, 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 the common based production. Uh, another element regarding reputation and, and social uh, use, uh, um, in order to measure the level of reputation of the cases, we, we identify a, 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 a limitation is that 
Other indicators of reputation, like for example, Google Page Rank, Alexa, Cred, Twitter followers or Facebook likes. We have been uh, collecting data for the 300 <laughs> cases on these indicators of reputation, but the problematic is that all of them are corporate, all of them, which is fine. But what is problematic is that all of them are close, so are not transparent. We don't know the algorithm. We don't know why they make reputative. Uh, they make a lot of reputation for Facebook pay rank of of as, uh, a case and not another. So a, a, a conclusion of of the peer to peer value research is that there is a real need of developing. Uh, indicators of reputation on the web that are based on, on uh, free and open source uh, uh, license. Uh, nevertheless, something we also identified is that there is a very big, uh, very strong correlation between the indicators of reputation. So if you are good in Facebook, you are going to be good in Google PageRank or in Alexa. They are tend to be very coherent between them. <coughs> in terms of governance, uh, uh, of the analysis of the governance of the co collaborative common based reproduction cases. First, uh, co conclusion is that common based reproduction tend to be highly open. We develop, we define an index of, uh, of openness, and uh, at least 50% of the cases uh, uh, are in a scale of 10 are in a, in a position of 6. So they are, they, they are very open. So this is a characteristic that somehow it's been achieved by common based products, even if they are very diverse in the way they are open. They are also highly free. 77% uh, of the cases have two of three indicators of freedom. And here by freedom we refer to the registration policy, referring that you can register without needing the, the permission of no one else. You have automatic registration or there is anonymous participation allowed. There is freedom in terms of the user profile policy, for example, if you can control the information that is about yourself in, the, in your profile. So we took indicators of freedom in common based reproduction and also it ends up that they are very, tend to be very, favor a lot of uh, freedom. Some of them, like 63%, also favor, uh, are based on self-governance, self referring that the community people involved can define their, their uh, norms and the regulation that involve the interaction. Uh, but there is, they are also very hierarchical in the sense of that 80% of the cases uh, actually have uh, hierarchies referring to different degrees of uh, user accounts. So there are, use, there, they are, account, there are some accounts that have power to uh, do things that not everybody has. And this refers to uh, accounts which are administrators of the site or, 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 or accounts that can block other users. So it's very common, as I say, 88% of the cases has different, uh, a structure of different power dim uh, dimension in the, in the type of account. The, in terms of the gender balance in these different kind of uh, uh, power positions, uh, it's, not, it's not as bad as previous literature has uh, pointed, at least. 25% of the cases, there is a 55% of female administrators. Uh, but what we, in our analysis, find that is the more problematic area is that there is a, a very, is very spread the lack of rotation of roles. So it's very common that there are roles, but there is only 5% of the cases that has a way of uh, rotating the roles. This is a, well, if, if there are Wikipedians in the, in, in the here, you will know this problem. It's a very well-known problem in which uh, the administrators start to be administrators in Wikipedia and there is, they, they have been there for the 10 years. So there is very, it's very problematic the element of ro ro rotation of roles in, in, and it's very common in, in the field. In terms of license, only 3% of the cases are based on proprietary license. So actually the, the free, and free license is very common in common based field production. We identified for 14 different types of, of uh, free and open uh, license. The most used license are general public license or creative commons. Um, and almost half of the cases are copyleft. By copyleft, referring that they have a clause that uh, promote uh, share alike. In terms of uh, uh, type of infrastructure architecture, 
even if uh, CAPS want to promote decentralized architecture, that's something that is not in the field. Actually, it's a, 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 a real need, and there is a lot of possibility of improvement because uh, uh, from 88% to 95% of the cases are based on putting the data into centralized servers. In terms of infrastructure architecture, the two forms of centralized uh, architecture are the most common, which are the ones uh, uh, based on centralized uh, and, and not free software, or centralized and free software, which would be the case of Wikipedia. In contraposition, the federate type of uh, uh, infrastructure architecture, like cases of Ainman's One, Lurea, or Pune, are only 3% of the sample. And only 5% of the sample is based on peer-to-peer -peer architecture. The, uh, the, the platform we are promoted in peer-to-peer -peer value will be actually based on federated infrastructure in order to cover this, this real need. Uh, finally, in terms of conditions of success, we have not identified, like, it's, this is common sense, there is not like a, a formula that characterizes the cases that are being able to generate value in all the dimensions of value that they are able to generate big communities, they are able to be reputable, they are able to have big monetary budget, not, not any of the cases like are good in everything. What we identify, there are different uh, models of, uh, actually, there are different models of success. There are some cases that are very successful because generate very big communities, while other cases are very successful because generate a very collaborative and injected uh, communities. Uh, we also identify that there are uh, some trends, like for example, the cases that are based on self-governance uh, tend to be able to generate more value, uh, but only in specific areas, like areas like uh, in flows or in uh, community networks, in this type of areas, self-governance favor value creation. But in other areas, that's, that is not present. So the conditions of success must be adapted to different, the different areas of production and, um, and again, uh, uh, different like, models of uh, success. Um, thank you very much. Just want to make a, a publicity that we, we a member of our uh, project is Johai Wendler, which is one of the, is the, actually the proponent of the com concept of common basic production, is going to come to Barcelona on the 25th of February, uh, and uh, he will be uh, reflecting on our research and, and presenting his, uh, his uh, book on the wealth of network, so you are invited to come. Thank you. If there are not uh, direct questions, we will move to the second presentation. Could you present yourself, please? Yes, uh, I'm Roger from the Infinite Foundation. Uh, and my question is about uh, why it's so problematic. You said that it's so problematic, the lack of rotation in the governments. Because gaining experience in governance takes a lot of time. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. If you can elaborate this bit more, please. Okay. Um, so, the data is that only 5% of the cases has uh, said that they have rotation mechanisms for changing the, the people in the, in the roles. Uh, that's the data. You can interpret it as you like. We consider it as, 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 as problematic and also be reflecting on on uh, on uh, on the conceptions inside of conceptions of democracy inside of the cases, this point as a problem, but that's a judgment that we we are uh, putting into it. It could not be problematic. It could not be considered problematic. That's not. Uh, Microphone. Sorry about this mic. Uh, which rate do you expect to be acceptable? So that five percent is too low. I don't have an answer. Uh, I think that at least half of the cases to have rotation uh, would be uh, positive. But uh, again, that's my judgment I, uh, or, or judgment. It's not. Uh, for example, in the European uh, Union, there is a force to rotate. You have to rotate. Uh, she, she, she's not always working in the same uh, kind of field. And I think that brings positive things. Yes. Uh, 
communities. I remember, in fact, I was in Future Emerging Technologies, we had a, a case study of the open source community, and it failed. Because they didn't realize, how, now the commission was really upset, they said, gosh, you know, this would have been a great project, it was just the right time to document things that after 10 years, nobody actually knows. So it was the right moment, but people didn't realize it, because it didn't fit in the category that people expected. So, uh, I'm going to speak about uh, Descent, a project that uh, started uh, about one year ago. It means uh, decentralized citizens' engagement technologies for direct democracy and economic empowerment. So, the, um, the core idea is that of um, um, okay, two, two main issues. The one is the, the top, uh, decentralization, decentralized architectures, and uh, the top democratic participation. So, um, we all know the importance of um, not the problems and the issues with uh, centralized architecture that are dominating now, um, with, uh, with accumulation of data in, in the hands of some private companies. And um, this is maybe not so much an issue, at least it's not so perceived as, as a real issue by individual users because the convenience you have in using this system is, is much bigger than the risk you have as an individual. But if you look at this um, as a society, as a collective level, um, this really implies some, some risks for, even I would say, um, for democracy on the long term or for, uh, also for sovereignty in, uh, at the European level. As, these companies are mostly in the US. So this is a, a very important issue and it is related to, uh, to democracy. And, and in, in the field of democratic participation, so uh, we expect to have a much higher uh, sensitivity to this topic because here it is particularly uh, relevant. And so we kind of connect together these two issues and um, we know that, uh, that the, um, our, uh, our institutions, the democratic institutions, have not changed much in the last decades, while uh, our, uh, our society has changed a lot, and we are uh, all the day connected with some uh, smart devices that uh, are connected to some data center somewhere, and um, we use it for entertainment for many purposes, and there is still um, a lack of tools, and of course not only of tools, um, of for, um, for democratic participation. So this was also, um, well, I would say, that the main demand of the citizen movement that, that, we, are, uh, that we are assisting in, in, a, in, a, in, in Spain and in, a, in a many other countries of the world, in which citizens are demanding um, a real democracy. And so um, forms of uh, participation and citizen engagement in the, in the political life. Um, so we, um, as Spanish partners, we are two institutions, uh, Barcelona Media and uh, WOC, Universidad Abierta de Catalunya, and um, we came to this project because of our individual participation in the uh, collective data analysis 15M. So we started with the idea of studying um, data of the 15M movement and of other uh, similar movements uh, for citizens for a of democracy. And, um, and so the, the, the idea was not only to study this data, to understand what was going on, but also to give something to the, to the citizens, to the community. So um, we could say uh, big data for the masses. Like big data now is, is um, mainly managed by uh, private actors that, um, you know, this issue of, uh, of the value, no? The value created in social networks. So every individual uh, creates some value adds, no? Contributes, creates some value, but then who is really taking advantage of, of the aggregation of this value to build knowledge? In many cases, are private actors. So our vision is that of um, developing a matrix of visualizations that can help um, users to have a higher awareness of the, of the state of the network. And and uh, okay, so this is also one of our uh, contributions to the, to the platform, to have this kind of analytics and visualizations to existing tools. Um, 
So, uh, the, so the main idea of, is of uh, uh, developing tools or improving existing tools for, uh, for democratic participation and, uh, and for economic empowerment. Um, and it's not just uh, building one more uh, platform, but uh, rather um, developing standards and uh, an ecosystem of, um, of federated uh, services. So the, the, the main idea are, uh, of having a um, um, unified uh, identification system, so decentralized but very e easy for the users, so in a way that you have um, li like a Google login or something like that you can imagine, with so an ecosystem of, um, of, um, of uh, nodes and of uh, services that share a different policy for, uh, for uh, uh, Respecting privacy and uh, data ownership, we have for this reason we have in uh, in the project the uh, W3C, which is the organization responsible for regulating the standards of the web, and so um, we are working at defining uh, some standards in which um, many of the existing uh, uh, initiatives that go in this direction uh, could, uh, could fit and uh, and integrate with, with one another. And, um, and so with some, uh, uh, also some basic, um, uh, basic uh, uh, facilities like uh, uh, collaboration, secure messaging, and uh, open data integration. Um, so um, we are um, collaborating with uh, existing uh, code bases and communities. And um, for example, we have uh, Democracy OS and your priorities for uh, prioritizing things. No, for, get, for selecting ideas among uh, many people and um, an open ministry in Finland for uh, lawmaking and then um, applications for uh, real-time polling and um, yeah, decision making and uh, okay. the, the, the last idea is that of um, for economic empowerment um, uh, a social currency. Um, I use the word Bitcoin to, to give the idea, but uh, in this case we don't want to scale up like Bitcoin, just uh, a bit less, I would say. And so to make a currency for um, currencies for local communities. Uh, and so we are collaborating uh, here in Catalonia with Eurocat, um, the project for um, a complementary currency. Um, Mutual credit system without interest. We don't have the time to enter the details. And um, so we have um, three large scale pilots. In, um, in Finland, we have uh, Open Ministry that manage the um, uh, low proposals uh, redacted by uh, and selected by, by citizens that uh, have to be. Um, to be um, uh, analyzed by, by the parliament. And then also some initiatives at, at, the, at the city level in Helsinki and in the neighborhoods in Helsinki. And uh, in Iceland also we have uh, uh, Better Reykjavik and Better Iceland, which are mainly based on uh, your priorities or software that was developed in, in Iceland to allow a large number of people to select priorities and um, and it is also used for um, for managing the budget of the neighborhoods operator, for example. And there are some pilots also in, in Estonia using this software. And um, okay, so these are two probably Finland and Iceland. We have some of the most advanced uh, experiences of uh, participatory democracy proposed by the institutions. Um, while in Spain we have a different scenario. We have uh, probably uh, the one of the most uh, active and lively movements uh, demanding for uh, more democracy and for participation. So we have a very large basis of users that are um, demanding uh, more participation. And so we started working with uh, some collectives uh, of the Fistina movement and then um, we, we, we are now working with Guanyam Barcelona, so a, a, a coalition for a, a bottom-up. Barcelona, 
and uh, with uh, LaboDemo, which is a collective that makes uh, tools for uh, um, uh, democratic participation in, uh, in Podemos. So uh, this is about the Spanish pilot. Um, we have uh, on the bottom some of the existing software that are already been, are already been used. There is also some, somebody from Agora Voting in the public. It is a, a great software for, uh, for secure voting. And, um, and so on one side we are uh, working to integrate and, and improve uh, some of these existing uh, software that are, we are very, uh, we are really following what the communities are using and, um, and then uh, understanding some needs that are not covered by current software and for example we are developing um, a distributed policy making uh, software. <coughs> So this is an example. Uh, probably some people here have participated in this uh, in this process for the um, amendment uh, of the uh, draft of the ethical code for Guanyam uh, and then of the final uh, appro approbation. Uh, okay, so the, the, the basic principles to wrap up are um, the, so um, fostering uh, uh, citizen ownership of data and access to knowledge. With, um, with infrastructures that are uh, secure and uh, privacy aware by, by design, with a decentralized uh, architecture, and um, building a kind of federation and an ecosystem for, for uh, different uh, service, services to, uh, to, be, to be integrated. And, um, and very important, the, the idea of uh, taking advantage of the network effect and uh, working with uh, uh, citizen movements that are that are, uh, are the early adopters, the early adopters of, uh, of our platform. Let's say so to, to get large bases of users to, to use our software, and, um, and we are developing in uh, with a uh, lean development process, uh, agile development. So we are in continuous uh, con receiving continuous feedback from the um, from the users. <coughs> Does your platform mostly produces data or consumes data? And in the first case, in what kind of form, formats are the data and the knowledge produced and available to anyone interested? Well, um, uh, I 
would say mostly uh, produced data. And um, there are there have been there are some standards that have been uh, uh, defined by the WGC group, so in a JSON based uh, format for, for that exchange. And uh, of course with different levels of visibility of the data, so no not all the data are in the public that is a big attention to cryptography, graphic algorithm. Seven thousand nodes, 
uh, nowadays. You can, you can compare, for instance, that is, there are more nodes, more infinite nodes in Catalonia than mobile base stations, several <coughs> times more. So that shows that uh, our crowdsourced infrastructure can go beyond what the telecom providers are offering locally, for instance. Um, this is a picture of an area that otherwise would not be probably served by the telecom providers, but now you see there is a lot of links, a lot of places connected, and in fact this region is perhaps the only county in Spain that is above the average connectivity in the whole Europe. So it's not Barcelona, it's this remote area 60 kilometers away from Barcelona uh, that has a really um, a outstanding infrastructure. You can go to many parts of the world. Here there is Austria, there is also another community that is involved with us. Uh, Greece, the Attica region around uh, Athens, few thousands of nodes which are, which are created by people who need to communicate. And they are not served by a, a reasonable price or a reasonable availability by, by the traditional centralized businesses. New York City, another example, covering the whole Italy. Um, a remote area in the north, in the nearby the Olympic Mountains, where probably will ne they will never get fiber or uh, decent connectivity. Otherwise, they are setting up their own uh, commons-based uh, infrastructure themselves. And many other examples. We we have even networks in South Africa, in different parts of the United States, in Asia. So the the the, the idea is in, in this project, and can be maybe a resource, as I said for you, is. Um, if you want to work with these communities, you can even do it remotely. So researchers from different uh, uh, topics, they can, they can use this, uh, this infrastructure to, to perform experiments together with the community networks. So at the moment we have, this is, in, indicates a number of uh, computers, let's say, we offer for people remotely to perform experiments. Uh, but also there is a lot of people that we can, we are, we are not counting here, but there are thousands and thousands of people that are involved in these networks and you can, I mean, through this testbed, you can, you can work with them. Um, I mean, for technical experiments, there is like a kind of uh, portal where you can perform uh, experiments. Um, and, um, and the idea is you, you can try different models, and these models can be technical, but also can be social. Um, and, and, uh, and trying things, experimenting things, is, is perhaps um, the goal of, uh, of, uh, of the project. Um, and and um, it's not just about new features, many times it's about finding um, what is the optimal way for, for uh, communities to organize, to, participate, to, to let people participate, how to find sustainable models for development so, so these infrastructures can reach more people, can uh, create more value, can be more open for participation. And um, currently, as, as I said, in this project we have a, we had two open calls. We received like about uh, 70 proposals. We selected about 10% of those, and we funded them uh, to perform social and technical experiments. This is a list of some of the, the, the ones we had, but, uh, but next to me, uh, you will see one of them, which by coincidence is, is taking place in this neighborhood. So you will see uh, one example of, of that. The testbed has is, is been running for, for a few years, and still, even though the project is going to end at the end of this year, we have one more year left, so there are two years left of, of community lab at least, so you can, you can use it in your experiments if you're interested. So how it works, well, you can join it. You can join the testbed, you can uh, propose your experiment. Now we are in the open usage uh, period, so you can, you can contact us and tell us what type of experiment with people, with computers, with networks, and, and we can help you to set up your experiment in one of the community networks that are already participating in the project. Or you can even, if you are interested, you can also join the testbed and, and contribute notes to the, to the com community lab testbed uh, if, you, if you wish. So that's, that's my, my introduction. And then I pass the floor to uh, Monica. Maybe we can put them together so you have a more uh, specific view of, uh, of uh, things that can be done with uh, uh, EU-funded uh, digital infrastructure for experimentation. So this is one experiment.
So, um, as Leandro said, Citizen Square Kilometer is a social experiment within Confine uh, with a geolocation platform and a communication um, ecology developed by Itinerarium. Itinerarium is a small company directed by Narcisse Rives, who will be here today, and research conducted by Igovnet, um, by myself, under my office's direction. This research, which is in the field of community-owned and managed uh, telecommunication networks, um, is a social project to help understand how the community networks technology can serve to European Union citizens. We work with the community network um, we, that we have here in Catalonia that um, Leandro has talked about, DIFINET, and in the neighborhood in Barcelona where we are today. Uh, Citizen Square Kilometer works on two levels. On a more technological level, we promote the use of the community network among the community of Alpoplanoc. We are doing workshops for citizens to learn how the community network functions to install nodes and to conduct a few experiments collecting data. We, we have this node here and this node here that have been created during the experiment. We have also replicated the platform within a GIFINET server. So GIFINET can now offer Citizen Square Kilometer as a service to the community through within the community project, which is also a European project. On a more social level, we want to see if the philosophy that um, the community network applies to nodes and antennas can also be applied to knowledge, to, de to data. So citizens own and manage the information that affects them. So we have created a map, um, you can download it on your phones because it has an app as well, where data can be copied and shared infinitively, massively, ge geolocatedly, and in almost real time. A map, it, it is a map where people will make an inventory of the things that are in the neighborhood, um, like institutions, uh, shops, historical buildings, plants, temperatures, etc. With the aim to overcome, the aim to better manage the information linked to the territory um, and classified by author, uh, source, and topic. We have spoken with the community, we have spoken with local associations, with shop owners, foundations, NGOs, schools, etc., for months, and to projects that um, are not related to this community specifically. Some of these projects that are here participate actively on Citizen Square Kilometer, and some others only has, have given us advice. So with their advice, we have developed different paths of participation. This is Google translation into English. Um, such as, for example, finding the optimal path, um, the optimal way to go from home to school and back, which is not always the shortest way. Or um, we have created a um, project uh, to make a census of the historical heritage of the neighborhood, etc. And we have, or we are developing a research methodology. We are collecting stories about the experience of the community by using this platform. And we are creating tutorials, guides, forms, and protocols to be able to replicate and escalate the project elsewhere. For the moment, we have been considering Sarantopora, which is a member of Confine, Cape Town in South Africa, uh, or San Andreo in Barcelona, which are just some of the places that are being visited. I don't, I don't have slides. Okay, 
I'm Marce Botella. I'm coming from uh, Ethicom Sancun Acción. It is a non-profit cooperative of consumers. Uh, and um, um, our, our main goals, uh, um, well, what we want, our mission, is to move towards more uh, sovereignty in the telecommunication services. Uh, we we born with the idea to to be the, the consumers to have more more tools to understand how these these uh, services work and to make decisions for ourselves to empower ourselves. Uh, we are very young. Um, we, we have less than one year and we have just starting. Um, and we born uh, with um, also in the in the mark of the uh, economic uh, uh, in the uh, network of the economic social economic uh, organizations that we want to transform the economical model. Um, this is the second goal of the, the, the cooperative because we want to be an active agent for the economical transformation process. Why we make a, a cooperative? Uh, first of all, because we, we are only consumers. Uh, just before uh, me has have talked about Ethernet, I, um, two, two or three years uh, ago, I tried to be one of the Ethernet people and for, for me it was very difficult because I, I, I wasn't, um, I, I had a, pro, a technical profile and in my territory, in my local uh, space, there was any people who could help me and then I thought that giving it was a very, very good experience but it depends on the, the local place, you have more or less opportunities to have these needs covered. And it was from these and other starting points that we, we thought it was convenient to start a cooperative of consumers. Uh, because uh, we, we know, um, uh, sorry, sorry for my level of English. <laughs> uh, we, we uh, all of, um, most of us, of the associates people, uh, where as well from Som Energia, that is another cooperative of consumers, and we needed strongly to cover our needs from a similar experience. Uh, not, not the energy necessities, uh, our energy needs, but our um, telecommunication services needs. Uh, in this way, and because in this uh, country, the, the most of the consumers of telecommunication services are very angry about our services because uh, most of them are very bad in uh, dealing, dealing, with, with, dealing with the people. And we are all bored about this. <laughs> uh, for all of this, we started this cooperative. And uh, from the first moment, we, we, we knew that Ethernet experience was uh, our first and uh, our main reference to grow up. Uh, the problem uh, for, for us is that we, we, we don't have money now. Uh, now. Nowadays, we are near 500 people, associates. We, we are uh, sure we will be lot of people more because we are we are in the in the, in the, in the, in the social economy here in, in Catalonia or here in Spain there are very big and strong networks that there are a lot of people waiting for us we can provide this service but uh, we are um, we, we, we don't provide yet in, in the uh, full months uh, we, we will be able to do it well, um, the, the, the three, three of the um, reflections we, 
we, we made was uh, the money is not the important, the, the important for, for us. The, the money it's only a tool for us, but we need it to, to do the things. But if we are a lot of people, we can do a lot of things and a very big things. Um, the second is the property. The property not, not only of the infrastructures that are very important for us, because to, for, for us it's important not, not to have the property about the infrastructure, but to, to share the infrastructure and the, and the management of this infrastructure with the collectivity, but not uh, on the hand of uh, an enterprise based on capital like all the infrastructures or almost all the infrastructures we have. Then the property is important because it's for all the societies, but uh, for the community as well, not only for the societies, it's for all the people, in the, for all the citizens. Um, uh, it's important the property um, in the cooperative uh, aspect because all decide about what we want to do and it's not, uh, the power is not in one focus, it's distributed uh, and um, we, we are interested in collectivalize co 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 the all the infrastructures of of, uh, of the nations. Yes. And the third um, uh, the third uh, aspect important for us is about information and knowledge. The people don't know how this sector works. Anybody knows why uh, the, the services cost or why we have to pay what we are paying? Anybody knows? Uh, probably a lot of people know, but not the, the, the people in the, the street, not, not the consumers. We, we pay because they say this uh, has this price and we pay this price. Uh, after two months, it's less price, but we don't know why this price is less. Then we need to have more sovereignty to understand why is the, what is the cost of the services we pay for. Um, and the only way we have found is to introduce ourselves to know this sector and this space of the activity. Uh, it's so important for our human, for some of our human rights. For example, we, we can't get information without internet. We it's very difficult to learn without internet. It's very difficult <coughs> to keep in touch and participate in a lot in a lot of movements without internet. And for us, it's very important to to recover our power uh, in front of this uh, disaster. No? <coughs> Well, uh, the, our strategy now is, mm, is, is, uh, is to, to have an investment ladder. Uh, we, we have to start uh, covering our needs uh, from reseller. We, we don't have a lot of uh, infrastructures. We could use probably, but we have to invest. In, uh, uh, we have to know if, if we could use um, uh, the, the network of Ethernet, the present network of Ethernet, but it's, it's very difficult the management of this, of this infrastructure in a quite, um, from, from our point of view, our point of view is, is, very, is, is very wide in the, in the places and the, the Ethernet usually structures from the local and we have to, to get in contact one by one. But probably we will use, we have to use the infrastructures of the big companies of telecommunications. And our main interest is to contribute in the, um, making the infrastructure of FTTH, uh, optical fiber, for, of the commons. And, well, it, this is our project and we, we have just starting. Uh, Thank you, Jose. So this this is not a, a European project, funded, but this is a, like, like this type of initiatives is the of the interest of uh, of CAPS or can be an example of this kind of CAPS uh, project. Thank you.
Questions? No? So we, we move to the last presentation from our uh, hosts, which is the Fab Lab, which again I would like to thank for uh, providing us with the space for a uh, meeting. Hello everyone and uh, thank you once again Mario for bringing such amazing people to, to Fabla Barcelona and to here. Um, I, I won't care about the color too much, but okay, so you are at the Institute for Advanced Architecture of Catalonia that hosts uh, the first Fabla in the European Union. Founded uh, Barcelona, founded in the, between the years 2006 and 2007. By that moment, we were about five fabs in the world. In around eight years, we are getting to 500 very soon. And I hope that by the end of the year, probably we will get to 1,000. I will try to explain more or less uh, what we do and what the fabs are. And also to introduce you to a project that has born in the Fab Lab. And to do that, I'm going to jump around 500 years of story. This is the 15th century when America was discovered. And um, by the way, it's purple. It's, it's purple. <laughs> Sorry about that. But anyways, I, I'm trying to explain that because uh, it's because in the 15th century, America was discovered, and we had medieval cities, and then a guy invaded the printing press and opened the doors of the sharing of knowledge that basically created the Renaissance. The Renaissance opened the door to the invention of the first machines that replaced the work of the human. Uh, then we accelerated communications, then we started to create better cities. Then we jumped from the printing press to wireless communications. This is Guglielmo Marconi at the beginning of the uh, last century, uh, he actually brought, uh, he, did, he performed the first communication between Europe and America. Um, also, this group of guys in Europe founded the Bauhaus and related arts and design together with the industry and a new way of production that was basically powered by industry. And I, again, just a, about a hundred years ago, we introduced the production line. So we centralized production into a massive, let's say, in a massive way. Uh, we now, as consumers, we go to supermarkets and pick what those industry provide us. And this had an impact into the cities and had an impact also into the world. We have created a standardized world. Whatever you go, you can get, basically get the same. You pick whatever is being given to you. So I'm pretty much interested in finding this relationship between cities and uh, in society. Um, and also, Bringing again a, a, another connection to that, we can say that we have only lived with, with uh, 50 years or 70 years of computers. So that leads us to what we created today, a world in which you extract raw materials from one part of the world, you transport them to another side of the world, and again, these, these things are being transported to where we consume them, and then we turn them into trash and we don't do anything with that. And then from that idea of the Renaissance mind, we have turned into these. Uh, so, but this is not, you know, this is not the end. Um, what we have seen is that from those computers and those and moving from the Guillermo Marconi wireless communication to the internet, we're introducing new ways of of producing communication uh, by using new means. No? If you if you think about it, it has been only around ten years that since we use Facebook or tools like YouTube that have turned us into producers of information. It means going from the TV model in which there someone broadcasting information and someone else consuming it, 
now you can actually produce information and broadcast it by yourself. No? So it's changing the, the rules of the game. Um, sometimes we use that information properly, sometimes we do it, uh, uh, sorry, not, not properly, sometimes <laughs> properly, it's the other way around. And yeah, what I'm trying to say is that sometimes we take stupid pictures and we share it, and sometimes we basically change the politics of our country by using the same means. Um, but then if you think about it today, we, we, say, we can say that computation and internet are powered in our lives, and the, the interesting thing is that we have, we have only lived with them by maybe 70, not even 70 years, 20 years, and, you know. Uh, I think it opened my email account in 1996, something like that, no? my first email account. So what happens if, if, if you introduce a new formula? No? So you have computation, you have these computers connected to each other, share, sharing, uh, and connected to people, sharing um, digital information. What happens when we can turn that digital information into things? And that's what, what digital fabrication comes in. I'm going to join this video, unfortunately, but basically what I'm trying to say is that new tools are uh, let's say allowing people to con uh, construct a bidirectional connection between the physical and the digital world. In one hand, uh, we can use computers to put sensors and capture data from our environment and turn it into digital uh, bits. And in another way, we can use 3D printers and turn information to turn bits into atoms. No? Um, and besides this tool, we have um, the fab labs, which are places like the size of this room that contain machines that they can make almost anything, and they are turning people into producers of things. It's like the YouTube of the things. It means that you can design, produce, share, create whatever you need or whatever you want to sell, whatever invention you want to create. There are, as I said, uh, close to 500 fab labs in the world that operate as a network um, in a very informal way. <laughs> Uh, as I said, one of those is us. We have done. We are in an architecture school. Uh, we do things like houses using different technologies. No? sometimes we use robots. Sometimes we use machines that cut materials. Sometimes we use smaller robots that can be articulated together to uh, actually construct buildings. No? So we have done many experiments of during all these years that includes. Uh, Play with sustainability, play with new technologies, creating new materials, and also doing it in a collaborative and open way. But besides architecture, I think that, as I said before, we're interested in cities and trying to understand how these places called fab labs are going to influence the, you know, how we live and how we uh, interact with each other. No? So, this is where the project fab, where the project fab City comes in that has been some kind of conceived in Barcelona in, uh, at IAC and now is becoming a public implementation of fab labs that are opened by the, fab, by the city council in Barcelona that are providing like, the new means for people to access to tools for production. These are the libraries of the future where people not only go to, have, to read a book or to have access to a computer but actually to turn information into things and again to solve local needs uh, as you, most of you uh, have heard today about Peer production. So these are the means for the peer production of things, for instance. We have organized a FAB conference in Barcelona this last summer, in which we bring more than 1,000 people from all the FAB network doing workshops for an entire week. And we got the commitment from the mayor of Barcelona to turn Barcelona into a self sufficient city in the next 40 years. We will see how we will do that. But basically, what, we're, what I'm saying is that we are providing open tools for the construction of the city by its own citizens. No? And one clear example of that I want to briefly introduce it and I'm going to finish is the Smart Citizen Project that was actually created in Fabla Barcelona in trying to, you know, in the counterposition of this idea of a smart city. A control room, the double of this size, in which people is just watch and someone is deciding what is happening in the city. Sometimes in a very stupid way, but actually this is at the winner of the 2013 the Smart City Expo. And the truth is that this is the other winner of the Smart City Expo as well, the Smart Citizen. We won the Innovative Project Award. And basically, we were concerned about the environmental issues in the city and how they could be addressed. We can do it this way, or we can do it in a more distributed way. And we did it thanks, in, you know, in part to platforms like Odeo. And we had an idea, we came to Odeo and said we need the money to do this. They were the money, of course. No one was believing on us a couple of years ago. And basically, we raised our first funds. We went to a second crowdfunding campaign and we received a little bit more money worldwide, which allowed us to, come to turn a prototype into a product. 
that now is being used by, by more than or close to a thousand people and has been implemented in cities like Amsterdam, uh, together with the uh, Amsterdam Smart City Council in, in the Amsterdam Council, or in Manchester with the support of Intel. No? So as I said, we won the Smart City Expo in 2013, and basically concluding what we want to do is to turn cities into, you know, more than factories of goods or centers of consumption, more into something like this. No? Uh, thinking about the worldwide connected cities that produce locally but share information globally. And I think that's it. <laughs> I just wanted some reflection on how we could construct viable and enduring design of um, accountability and uh, responsibility uh, attribution in decentralized spaces. Um, we have this morning had an uh, interesting discussion about collectivization uh, and decentralization uh, in various forms. Uh, but, uh, how do we, in such an organization, encourage unselfish, altruistic, but orderly, and therefore efficient, but yet creatively, organically uh, uh, diffused and, 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 and uh, chaotic if non-risky behavior, which is essentially still responsible? We usually say, I mean, I'm going to talk from our experience. You know, we say that the fab labs are the safe places for strange people, right? And, um, and there, in those, in our places, where people basically do whatever they want uh, by using a new set of tools. If you come on how we can account uh, these places, how we can control them, uh, how we can make it to be good, you no? Know? But I think that's a question that would apply to almost anything. Use as, as a means of production because at the end of the day, uh, and this discussion came uh, has come a few times. For instance, they will say, you know, some people can 3D print guns using the 3D printers. Yeah, of course, you can 3D print a gun, but basically, with the same tools that you make a bike, you make the canyon of a gun as well. So at the end, the responsibility, the human factor, is part of the human factor is, uh, itself. Um, the new rules of how we control it is, is the same of that these are uncontrollable. And uh, it's as we are, I mean, uh, society is uncontrollable. It, it, what is happening on the internet is trying to be controlled as well. Um, I think we need to basically assume that we are going to a, to a point in which people will have more means of doing the non-stop, produce more content digitally, physically, yeah? and then the, the new rules of controlling that will come, I think, not from top-down approach, but actually from more from bottom up. I think that the, in that sense, communities and locality will get more and more important. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah? Okay, was that the answer when you did uh, Marco Berlinguer, you think about it. One question for Monica and one for David. Uh, for Monica, if you could tell something about the experience of uh, about engaging people and communities in your platform, which were the challenges, which were the difficulties, which were the most interesting uh, experiences you could uh, uh, tell us about uh, your work. And David, if you could say if you already have got some insights about the experience uh, of new forms of uh, democratic participation. What would be the lessons, let's say, that you learned th 
through this kind of exploration and uh, experimentation. So what we have um, done has been to approach um, organizations, institutions in the neighborhood that are already conducting projects. And we've shown them the platform that we have designed and they have come up with the ideas on how to use the platform to make their projects um, be better, function better. So we, we have really been talking to a lot of people, maybe I've come to visit 150 different institutions and, and individuals. But also um, what we have tried to promote is for them to find out the, the way to use it themselves. And then with the information that they have given us, we have um, developed the ideas of these parts of participa participation. To put an example, this one of um, going from home to school and back, that's, um, we call it the, the best path, the optimal path. Um, we are working with scientists from um, CREA, scientists from PIA, from the point of information of aerobiology. Um, we are working with a, a project that's called um, Camins uh, Scholars, which is from the IME, it's from the um, uh, City Council, the Barcelona City Council. We are working with AMPAS, with associations of fathers and mothers of schools. And um, we are working with DPATH, which is an experiment in a uh, citizen um, science um, in initiative. And we brought them all together. And um, what we are now trying to do is to write protocols and guides so this very same project that we are doing here can, be, um, uh, can happen somewhere else, can be replicated somewhere else. With this, um, this specific project, we will be able to hopefully find out um, what streets um, should you you should take to go from home to school if you are allergic to a specific plant. We want to find out which streets um, have more noise, which streets have the best um, conditions of um, oxygen, the, the uh, air quality. Um, which streets have more shops that um, take care of the students, etc. In the, just, just to for you to have an example of um, how can we use um, the project for the citizens. It's not us who find out what is the best use of the platform. It's the citizens themselves who think about how to use it in the best way and. And all of these different paths are explained on the, um, on the website. Um, and you can have a look. Uh, we are at rest now? Yeah. Um, there's also another path which is about um, historical heritage. So students are using um, archives of um, students and other citizens archives of information about the neighborhood that has been collected over the years and they are kept in PDF and this information that has been collected by the citizens about for example each building of Poplano, what was it in the end of the 19th century, the beginning of the 20th, is now being geolocated. And what we want to see is when you put all these different um, layers of information together and you can filter it we want to see what information, um, what knowledge comes out of crossing different layers of information. And this knowledge that comes out can be useful for children, for parents, for scientists, for researchers, for um, city council, for managing better the, the city. <laughs> for the question.
experience with uh, political participation. Um, um, I would say, we, as expected, the, the social aspect is uh, even much more complex than the technical aspect. And uh, um, what's the first thing is uh, involving you, engaging users, but um, this is sometimes not so difficult if you have an organization promoting it, not if you have a organization that is binding for Podemos or for Guanyam, then you have a lot of people that will, will, will use the system. So on one, one side, you work on, on uh, how making the experience for, for the user to make it usable, but then there is the issue of having these tools adopted by, by the organizations. And, and so there, there is always a tension no? between what, uh, to what extent you can, uh, you can manage problems with, uh, with the participation. Because it's a new field that if you if are an organization, you don't put uh, in the hands of the people uh, any choice with, with tools that you are not, are not being tested. So there is, um, there is a lot uh, uh, here in this. Uh, so sometimes it, we found out that um, we were thinking of very ambitious, uh, um, developing an ambitious uh, code for, for, with a lot of functionalities. And sometimes um, the real need is something simpler but uh, really usable and really, really um, like efficient for, for the need of the, of the organization. Um, so maybe this is the main. Uh, that are digitally fabricated um, that's of course something people are afraid of um, there is also bioterrorism and all these kind of things that well, I, I sense that it is used to make people afraid of these technologies uh, and this can be seen in the context I think of what we've seen the, the war on file sharing and piracy that we saw 15 years ago or more in, in the music and, uh, and movies being shared. Um, Gardner published last year the research that they expect in the year 2018 100 billion dollars of files being traded as in theft. Because that's what I call it, right? So I'm wondering, I'm asking you, what do you consider of regulations that are can be positively regulating this, and which regulations can be really a threat to this open model uh, of peer production in, in hardware? I can't answer a difficult question, but I mean, I, I, again, my, my opinion on, on, on these issues is that. Uh, I would say that um, usually things uh, or there are things that happens in these kind of places move, move faster than the people that regulate stuff. So somehow the people that regulate is some kind of, I would say, if you compare it with these places or these kind of projects that come out of these more open spaces are obsolete in relation to that. And sometimes, most of the time things move faster of the internet, well, the internet itself has gone faster than the regulation itself. And that's why there's still open space for many things that are illegal. Well, you would say illegal because it's not even considered, right? So, I mean, we face some of those issues together with what, what happened in, in, in our, sometimes in our lab, you know, that when people come with some idea that actually you, you would think all the threats that it could represent or at the same time all the opportunities that they could represent. Um, one very clear issue is that mobile phones are, turn, are becoming 3D scanners. So uh, actually my mobile phone is a 3D scanner and I can use it to, and it's not because it's a special phone, it's actually every one of your phones, anything, any of your phones could become a 3D scanner. So you can go to an exhibition and this time you see them and 3D scan a few star chair and then go back to your phone lab and reproduce it. That's it, as easy as it that, as that no? And that's something that is not regulated. We would say you get, so then you would not, I mean, how to approach this? So it would be forbidden to enter into museums with mobile phones, 
or you would have a disclaimer if you don't load the app that allows you to turn your phone into a penis scanner. Or if you go to the fact that you will, someone kind of a guardian, guardian of a, a intellectual property with, is going to be checking you whether you do something that is licensed or not. I don't have a clue. But I think that, uh, what I say, what I think is regulation itself is becoming more and more obsolete. And uh, then you trade, when you regulate and trade creativity, that's the other thing, that's the other danger. And, and when you sacrifice creativity for regulation, then you have the stupid world we have today. David Frippitt from the University of Surrey in the UK. Uh, so my question is mainly for Thomas, but uh, it also applies to the whole program in some ways. It's about the relationship between um, amateur and professional. And I wonder if you can reflect on how far, once you enable citizens to innovate and to design and to plan and build, um, do they hit a brick wall of training and skills and how does that change the relationship with uh, professionals? Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's totally a, a big issue. Uh, and, and often, I mean, when, when we give these kind of presentations, I mean, it seems like we're trying to say that everyone will become a producer and everyone is going to make things. That's not the case. I mean, you, you would still want to buy some things and you would still want to someone that is really a pro to say to do it for you because you trust in that those skills that are being mastered in years and so on. But I think that you you, you what well, we have done is we took that into the extreme and then you basically you give away, you are outsourcing many things that you could do by yourself and you just buy them as services. And you know that's why we are this all the businesses and startups and whatever are turning into services. It's, it's the services where where the money is. But that would be for a while, but at some point, if you can you know, go back to those, that, that trade that we did as a society, and you say, you know, I can recover some of this stuff, no? I mean, somehow you, we are doing it. When you go to a key and you buy a piece of furniture, disassembled, you are actually becoming part of the production line of IKEA because you are becoming a worker of IKEA. They are paying you somehow because you buy it for cheaper. It should be done. So, you're doing the work of IKEA. At some point, I think that you will go further, and then you won't buy a design made by someone else, but actually you will design something, and then you instead to go to an IKEA that is in the outskirts of the city, you will go to an IKEA that is in your neighborhood and has a digital fabrication machines, and you will make the machines inside with your designs that fit to your apartment. So I think those are trade-offs that you do. And, and again, I don't see that everyone moving to one direction or to another. And in terms of the skills, yes, yes, there is a big gap today with the introduction of a new skill. But I mean, if you think about 15 years ago, none of us knew how to use, you know, email, you know, any of these platforms that we use today. My mom is my friend on Facebook. I mean, I never, I, we would never imagine that, no? Like, you know, it, with all the consequences that it has in the comments <laughs> that you can have in your time by the mom. But uh, the thing is that we, we are also working, for instance, in introducing uh, or working with schools by introducing new data fabrication tools into the curriculum. And don't, it doesn't mean that kids learn uh, 3D printing as they, uh, as they go to a karate, karate class, but actually how the curriculum adapts to the introduction of new tools. It's how you learn mathematics by, doing, by building your experiments, or by 3D modeling and, and you know, turning a formula into an object, for instance. Or how you learn geography by making the terrain or something into experience of how water uh, you know, uh, goes through it. So I think that it's a, it's a whole new set of tools and skills that is coming. But as I mean, the, the answer would be education, and then uh, I don't know, we would see the results maybe in 15, 20 years that we have seen in computers. Yeah, I'm Jennifer something in conclusion. I think that the um, elephant in the room is, is in all of this is power structures or emergent power. Uh, patterns are relating, patterns of power uh, with, to 
itself and to others that inevitably emerge. If you have uh, thousands of displaced people, say from Syria, walk, uh, coming in to a settlement, soon uh, some leaders emerge within that uh, tent city, and soon there will be some kind of structures put in place for things like safety assurance, value assurance, and answerability. You know, who would answer when some? Now, the ideal, the, the, you know, sort of the utopia of flat, flat, flat architectures of all societies uh, will not last long because soon something at a higher level, just horizontally, has to be put in place because not everybody is born equal. Some people have to have the floor raised for them. Some people will have to have protection. Some value that is created by such labs or other people, some uh, creativity which is very prized and, 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 and to, be, to be cherished, needs to be answerable to some safety, some value assurance, some fairness. All of these matter and they emerge in it. What we are trying to do is say, look at the power structures that prevail today, and there are things wrong with it. Yeah, we know that. How do we actually not totally forget about the notion of ascendancy of certain levels to others so that they could police the situation in all in, in, in interest of everyone, but uh, not throw the baby with the bathwater, but actually how do we reinvent those notions in a way that improve upon, upon the structures of today. Uh, but wholesale, you know, uh, throw away of structures that are essential <coughs> and and self you know self-emerging of in, in human societies is, is a non second. It does is is a non start. So uh, you know I think that these issues are very caps and need to be explored and, and, and you know you have to find some good, good answers. And, 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 and that's my point. I couldn't agree more. I'm not praising for an, uh, like a tech anarchism. You know? Like, you know? I mean, someone needs to put pipes and roads. Even taking it to you know, the base of the earth. Um, that's it. And you would like to make screws with your 3D printer. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, what I'm saying is that we need to be a great, we need a, a plug in. Because we are acting like we were in the Victorian. Question?